Yeah, so the so you talk about mi padre el más fuerte del mundo, and you said you know it had to be in Spanish. It did it it, it hit differently, and it mm -hmm. does. Um, I'm mean, obviously there's a lot of overlap. I mean, there's a lot about masculinity and about your relationship with your father or the speaker's relationship with his father. But you know, as far as the bilingualism or biculturalism, the the poem, you know, a lot of O's. If we're talking the L form, right? Trabajó, sobrevivió, cre cruzó, se casó. Mm -hmm. All about your father, right? And it, you know, I'm just on a sound level, on a on a craft level, it just works. And then um, it goes into the you know to the yo form, talking about yourself or talking about the speaker, and just you know, it serves as like a natural juxtaposition, right? Not that everything is different between the two. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it just works so well. Um, some of the lines, it, it starts off, Mi padre trabajó desde los cinco años. Trabajó para mantener a sus hermanos. How, we, I think we all have people in our lives like your father. How do we, how do we live up to, <laughs> to something that's like unlive, unlive up to a bull, you know? Or, or more so like, you know, you weren't forced to work at five, right? To keep mm -hmm. your family safe. Like, how do we live in that space where we can idolize, but also not hold ourselves up to that standard. So I'm asking you a huge question. Yeah. Can you explain this to the world, please? So we can all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is something that I struggled with for a long time. Um, like, um, I think at some point I wrote something like, like I almost saw myself as an extension of my, of the sacrifices of my parents. Wow. Yeah um so it's it's a huge burden and mm -hmm. and one um that honestly i wouldn't want on anyone mm -hmm. um because um it's it, it's daunting um mm -hmm. and it, it meant that i um like put in a lot of effort in in the area that was that i was strongest in which was academically mm -hmm. Um, so I think it very much propelled me to have have a certain level of academic success. Um, but at the same time, it, it I think it contributed to a lot of mental health um, mm -hmm. issues as well, yeah. uh, where I, I didn't feel like I was good enough or I felt that in some ways uh, my parents' love was contingent on that that academic success. Mm -hmm um so i think uh, and and i still struggle with it but i'm trying to um just be able to experience joy and and kind of know that my parents that that, that in many ways that's what they really truly wanted for me right that right have, to have joy to to be able to have experiences and opportunities that they never had mm -hmm. um, likewise with my kids like I want them I want them to have um to be able to experience and seek joy um in a way that's not tied to to me right <laughs> independent of me right. um because um yeah they're 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 their own people and um yeah thank, thank you thank you there's there's that's very deep and and the 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 poetry definitely makes you think i like you know the idea of being successful independent of of us of your parents um you know there's definitely an awe a w e an awe that comes through in that poem and the others you know for your father the like you talked about, just an admiration for the incredible amount of sacrifice. One of the lines is, Mi padre es una indomable fuerza con un poder infinito. And, you know, the idea again of, uh, El trabajo para asegurar nuestro futuro. So, right, so he worked so hard to, to, to make sure we had a beautiful future and just, you know, paying it forward and all the, the cheesy stuff there. But, mm -hmm. um, you write, I think, in that poem about um, "Se me va, se me va" comes up twice, and it's incredibly powerful. Talking about you know the loss of your father, and it's "Se me va, se me va," and the second time is "Porque no necesita Dios," because God needed him, right? 
Yeah. So, you know, like I said, you know, I again want to express the the condolences for your father and in, in writing about him. I know it's got to be beautiful and sad and, and all of the above. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder how, I wonder, you know, on the positive side, on the awe side, the idea of the good things that the great things that your father passed on, they come through in the poetry, come through in the collection. Um, well, I definitely like his storytelling, um, his, He, I don't know. I'm thinking about, um, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm having having a hard time with this one. No, no problem. Um, yeah. No, problem. no, just just the idea of like like we talked about the sacrifice, and that comes through from the speaker's point of view, uh, definitely an awe and, and a reverence for that. Um, one of the poems is License to Live. And I mean, I took it as like a, a passing on of the ID, like the driver's license, mm -hmm. you know, what it brought. And just with, you know, the hologram that we all can all picture, like the the shiny thing on the, on the license and just like the memories that linger, right, from that. And just a, like a physical representation remembrance of your father um you know so of course there's there's a, there's a lot of grief um one of the poems right it, the quote is quote all my questions flock into my mind i am not vessel enough to contain them and i just think that that sums up grief so well i can't i can't contain them you know it's i'm not a vessel enough um dreams come through uh, for sure. Um, I know all those of us who have lost loved ones, you know, the idea of the dream. Um, you wrote about one dream where the the speaker pushes the father to see, and you write that he, he rematerializes, basically, that the father won't let me touch him. He will not let me hold, is the way that poem ends. He will not let me hold. Mm -hmm. Let me hold him. Let me hold together as a person. I wonder what kind of you meant with that line. He will not let me hold. Yeah, um, I think hold on to him, but but I also like. Well, I was trying to play with the the meaning a little bit, mm -hmm. but just hold on to myself in some ways to. Yeah. Um, hold on to his memory. Yeah. Um, because it's it's part of that. Uh that set of three where it's um three three dreams right uh-huh like after the, after his passing right um so so it's really about trying to hold on to his memory and mm -hmm. i think and in, in some ways also me or, or the the speaker mm -hmm. um <laughs> pushing uh, also like there being some resistance to it too like mm -hmm. like pushing certain aspects of him away too Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah thank you um you know obviously masculinity is a big theme runs throughout um waterfall waterfall duplex is one of the earlier poems some of the lines are quote father told me i should never cry um this idea of the father like hiding from the sunlight the narrator saying he can't name his fears um the way that pendejo from the father hurts way more than English, you know, put all the curse words together. That's from Convivir. How to Make a Man was a really interesting poem because it's all in second person. You know, it reads like a Jamaica Kincaid or Laurie Moore. Um, I wonder, kind of, kind of random. But I wonder if you've ever heard the song. Is a Johnny Cash song, "Boy Named Sue"? Um, I don't think so. No. So the song is basically about you know this father names his son Sue. Hmm. this idea is that he wants to prepare his son for the tough world out there. Right. And the, so the kid gets clowned on, he gets made fun of, he gets ripped on. Mm -hmm. he, he's very upset at his dad and his dad at the end is basically like, I did this to like harden you to the world. Hmm. You know, like I knew this tough world out there. 
Um, so, you know, it's one of the lines is, quote, tell him he is useless just enough for him to believe. And I just was reminded of that Johnny Cash song and ideas of the skin like leather uh, and about like hardening. How when we talk about tough love that came through, like in those poems, mm -hmm. do, do you see the love more in, like every day, every year as, as as you mourn your father? Do you see the love that came from the tough love? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit complex again, um, because, um, I think, um, like the, the, the Padre and, and Mi Padre and Más Fuerte del Mundo, mm -hmm. um, I wrote that poem when, um, when I found out cancer. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it actually like at the nurse's station, mm -hmm. um, uh, after, right after I found out and it's almost verbatim what I wrote okay. in 17 yeah um so i think that that was more my like initial mm -hmm. kind of view of him like larger than life like he was um like i think the line is like um mi padre mi dios mm. um so but kind of as as i, I went to college as as i as I grew into adulthood, mm -hmm. um, I began to learn that not everyone's childhood was the way that mine was. Sure. Like, not not everything, um, not everyone had um, kind of like this idea of like the patriarch and that has like complete control and in some ways was kind of like socializing me to, to replicate that. Mm. Um, so, um, and and growing up, I always felt like I didn't fit into that archetype. Mm -hmm. um, like I was, uh, I was a crybaby, right? When when my dad was telling me not to cry, and mm -hmm. I preferred like reading and like playing sports or like doing or like doing weights or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't I, I didn't feel like I fit that that ideal that my dad wanted for me um and so i think that i um kind of pushed away some of the or or kind of like worked against some of that socialization or that mm -hmm. way um or that that learning i try to undo some of that that learning mm -hmm. up of uh that those bit patriarchal and and in many ways misogynistic ways of thinking right. um and yeah so so i think that that uh that speaks to like the evolution of of the grief right mm -hmm. so there's like wholesale like acceptance and and despair over his loss and then and then it becomes more nuanced over time as mm -hmm. as i understand um myself in, in relation to him and mm -hmm. and also learn more about him um right um and then and then finally like with my children like when my when my son was born and now suddenly i'm making decisions about how to parent and mm -hmm. how to discipline and how how to um encourage and help my my son and, and my daughter grow um it also makes me reflect it's like oh well the, there are these things that i really really love like like they're like specific games that like my dad would play with me that mm -hmm. I, I play with my children or like different sayings or songs that i sing mm -hmm. to them stories that i tell them so like um and uh, my dad was always like really like physically affectionate so like he would like mm. hug us and kiss us a lot which isn't isn't as as typical of of someone who's like a, yeah. um like kind of a macho man sort of thing mm -hmm. um so so there are a lot of like wonderful things and um that um that definitely are incorporated into my parenting style mm -hmm. that are also things that i'm actively uh, against or, or like trying to undo and mm -hmm. 
And like sometimes I still fall into them because it's what I know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so there's a lot of internal work that goes on to try to limit how much that happens or like think sure. through why why that is. But um, but yeah, it's it's not like complex personhood. He's he there there, and I miss him every day. Um, there there are still days where. Um, like, like recently my, my son has started asking about him more. Um, it's like, oh, like your dad died, um, right a long time ago. And say, yeah, he, he died a long time ago. He would have really liked to meet you Mm. sort of thing. Um, but, um, so there's that. And then I'm also like, it's like, damn dad, like you really really fucked me up in some ways Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and we can we can hold both of those in balance and you um i mean the book the love the love for your father for sure comes through the lessons he imparted Mm -hmm. um you know but like you said complicated complicated the way that you you it's it's that you've reacted to complicated the way uh, the man that he was like all of us thank you so much for you know for for putting a spin on is not the way to put it but just you know ideas of masculinity and and really challenging that and that comes through in the collection for sure there's um one of the lines that really just stood out to me was like wow it's um this isn't how to make a man and you know it's it's kind of like the classic like dad was bragging kind of about you know having different girls um you know kind of you know like the, kind of the traditional like tough guy things like oh yeah i got a lot of girls you got any girlfriends and the last stanza is quote apologize for what we've become after a few beers. And I just, that line apologize for what we've become um, just really stood out to me. How, how immediate was that? Like in that, how much was that like an apology in the moment? How much did you feel like that? Like covers so much like for what we've become, I guess is what, is what I was wondering about what that means. And it was so powerful. Yeah. Um, well, what have think, we become? What had you become? Um, I think, well, that, that, uh, that, that like archetype of the like toxic man, right? Mm-hmm. Or of toxic masculinity, like, um, like my dad, he, um, he always wanted the blinds closed. Um, okay. oh, actually, there's a, there's a poem and, yeah. right? um about that um I was one of the blinds closed and when my mom like opened the blinds he like threw one of her pots and like her which were like her treasures right like in in the in the on the concrete in the backyard like um and um and in some ways I I have that in me like that's part Mm -hmm. of that's part of my makeup um like I've I think I worked very hard to kind of internalize a lot of my feelings and, mm-hmm. and, and like, I was afraid of my own rage and my own voice in many ways. Um, so I think, I think that apologize for what we have become is it, it's kind of like more, more general to, to a lot of men, to, to mm-hmm. be honest. Um, mm. right so like the the these kind of um ways in which there there's that capacity for harm of others mm-hmm. um and and that's kind of what i was what i was getting at mm-hmm and yeah, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a collection, a lot of, about a lot of grief, but I don't, you know, there's not, it's not all pessimism, pessimism, even, I don't know, even that line, what have, what we have become, even the we to me was almost like optimistic or at least not pessimistic. There's a, there's a, we, there's a collective, you know, mm-hmm. um, there's a, a joining together of family of father and son. The, I haven't done a good job, you know, introducing the, you know, even talking about the, the collection, Right, the collection. <laughs> it was published by. Remind me of the publisher. Uh, nomadic, nomadic, Press. nomadic press, right? 
called Lost and Other Rivers That Devour. Um, there's a preface, you know, that references loss and grief as quote ever evolving. In the end notes, there's a beautiful, um, you know, not the end notes, like the acknowledgments, a beautiful uh, tribute to your father, quote, más que una década después de su muerte, el dolor sigue allí persistiendo y evolucionando. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, the usage of usted with your father. Did you did you reference your father as usted when he was living? Was that mm -hmm. something that was demanded of him? Was that something that was kind of an unwritten rule? Like, yeah, it was it was it was expectation. Like with any any adults, um, we would always use usted. Mm -hmm. Um, and to the point where like I have parent teacher conferences, mm -hmm. you know, and then I still like use usted with the parents, but now, now uh, many of them are like my same age. So they're like, okay. <laughs> look at me weird, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, that was, that was the expectation at, at our house. Yeah. Well, you know, the whole collection is a beautiful tribute to him and that, that line and that kind of thing. What what are these rivers that you reference in the title? Um, I think it was um kind of different different time uh, like uh, the the organizing principle was like talking about the grief of our father, right? Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to talk about other griefs, so like the loss right. of, of heritage, the mm -hmm. loss of language. Um, but also um, like the violences at the U.S. Mexico border. Hmm. Um, so like the like of of the poem of like um, um, about uh, Jacqueline Calent Makin mm -hmm. who was in border patrol custody, mm -hmm. um, and a couple of the poems also like speak to um, just the the violence of our immigration system. Mm -hmm. And, and the impacts of of that on on people's lives um so just thinking about a lot of a, a lot of losses and among mm -hmm. and, and grief yeah yeah i mean i felt the poem about jacqueline was i mean maybe only could have been written by a father you know what i mean maybe just the way that you know you you, you wrote about her life and just so many like questions about you know what she thought, you know, just not knowing um, so much and just, you know, having those innocent students in front of you as we always, you know, tend to see students as innocent. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And, um, you know, you talk about borderlands and the pantland. there's, there's the, there's a, the poem, I know it has bridge in the title. Um, it's something about building a bridge, maybe. Um, retrofitting bridges. Retrofitting. Exactly. And just so much about contradictions and, and in-betweens. And I think it's a good place to, to kind of end in that, you know, it's so much about what your father has given you, what your mother has given you, what your background, what all of us, all of us are just a, a you know, we're a, a, what's the word? We're just, a, we're a mixture. Quote, you are not just you. You are a culmination of every book, limestone, conspiracy, oppression, empathy, and all else you have experienced. You have taken from every person just as you have given. On this day, I want you to know that I love you, especially when I hate you. Protection for the Casa Triste, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, I become the orchard and the railroad. Just so many, like, if they're not in direct opposition, so many, so much juxtaposition. And this goes throughout the whole collection. Um, it makes you sad. It makes you happy. It makes you think. Um, and as someone who... Unfortunately, I think a lot of us have experienced grief in some way. Your your line about um, quote he wishes or he wishes they had shared a proper goodbye before each became a ghost of what they had once been, a father, son, and the Holy Spirit gone. And you know, so thank you so much for putting on paper this idea, like that we are all ghosts of what we were before. You know, once someone has passed away, we're just, I mean, it's its obvious to say, but we are just not the same. Yeah. Right. And, and I know, you know, for the better in, in many ways, but we're just, we're just not the same. That just uh, rang so true to me. And I know it rings so true to your readers. Um, grief is incredibly, in my limited experience, incredibly hard to write about. So thank you for writing about it. I hope it was in some way cathartic for you. 
was it <laughs> uh, yeah in, in in some ways like um i think i think since i'd spent so much of my childhood kind of repressing my emotions like mm-hmm. being able to write about things was like almost a way to discover them like what right. i actually felt. so like i remember writing um uh, green at the, mm-hmm. the poem green how i love you green mm-hmm. um like like based off or yeah i kind of borrowed it from uh from lorica oh, okay yeah. um but um yeah so um Just about yeah, vines was, and about like mom having like a green what do you call it a green thumb that kind of thing yeah yeah it was well, it was um about an instance when my when my dad um actually like um like put his hands around my my mom's neck mm. once um in in anger um mm. and and like sh- they called the police and and everything like the neighbors called the police um and um i just remember like finishing that poem and then just crying like mm. um like for I don't know how long um and I think in in writing this collection it's helped me um process a lot of those feelings a lot of a lot of that grief and Mm -hmm. understand it better um and yeah and understand both my dad and and myself better Mm -hmm. um in in thinking it through and because I mean one of the beauties of poetry is that sometimes like metaphors can feel more real than mm. that just like a straight description of, right. of this happening like right. um in those metaphors you can discover things that you, you didn't know mm-hmm. as we wrap up I'd love uh, to you talk about future it sounds like you have some cool um, news and some things coming out and then if, if you're up to it totally up to you if you want to read a poem or two or of your choice or whatever but i'd love to know what's what's coming up um yeah so um i am really happy to um or about the fact that i'm going to have my debut full length collection um yes. flower song press yes um yeah so it's it's called foundation okay um so it's a it, very much is is like building from uh from this uh the chapbook mm-hmm. uh lost another rivers of devour they they share some poems but not not okay. all of them. um yeah so that'll that'll be out in in 2023 all right uh, so not not too far yeah um yeah and then and then you mentioned reading a couple poems <laughs> totally up to you if, if you read or whatever you read but we'd love to hear okay um i think i'll read two so since we talked about it a lot so mi padre <laughs> excellent i heard you mi padre el más fuerte del mundo Mi padre trabajó desde los cinco años. Trabajó para mantener a sus hermanos. Sobrevivió lo más duro de la vida. Cruzó al país la oportunidad. Se casó con una de sus muchas seguidoras, con mi mamá. Trabajó para asegurar nuestro futuro. Quedó deshabilitado en el trabajo. Mi padre es una indomable fuerza, con un poder infinito, con una mente de genio. Lo único que le faltó fue oportunidad, que este país no le brindó, pero que ahora me brinda a mí. Aunque estaba deshabilitado, podía noquear a cualquiera, hasta el mismo Julio César Chávez. Yo trato de describir su grandeza pero no creo que sea posible hacerlo. Pero este es un esfuerzo. Nací idéntico, su reencarnación en vida, 
un clon, un hermano gemelo, menor por solo unas décadas, los mismos ojos, el mismo pelo, la misma mente, el mismo amor por la familia. Pudo haber sido grande, pudo haber sido casi un dios en ojos estadounidenses, pero tuvo que trabajar por su familia amada. Padre mi guía, Padre mi Dios, lo amamos por ello. 95% cáncer, páncreas. Hijo de Dios, seguidor bendito, se me va porque es necesitado en lo más alto del cielo. Se me va porque lo necesita Dios. Beautiful. Thank you. It's, 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 an, it's another thing altogether to hear you read it. So really appreciate that. It, it took on another life for sure. My, when you talk about mantener los, los hermanos, something to that effect, mm -hmm. that doesn't, that, that to me rings out like, you know, that doesn't have an English translation exactly. Right. I mean, to take care of, to keep, to. Yeah. It's like another it, one. Yeah. Yeah, I should have put that one into the convivir poem too. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The the usage of of brinda. What is brinda? Um, I, I think in this context, like to to give, to offer. Okay, like a brindis, like a toast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So the so the United States did not give him or offer him opportunity right. that offers it to me oh man that idea of like being a, a genio un genio pero no tiene no tenía oportunidad is is you know heartbreaking um and those last lines i mean talk about a, those last lines of the poem as a whole you talk about like a reverence like a you know el, el lugar más más alto algo así wow yeah thank you um, for sharing that yeah my dad would always say um uh, well, I, I would ask him, it's like, are are you afraid to die? And then he would say, no, because um, uh, because if God needs me, I'm here for him. Wow. Um, and so that's kind of where that line comes from. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then so I'll, I'll read one more. Awesome. A longer one. So it's the, actually the title poem to my um to my uh full length. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, so it's also in here, but uh foundation. One. November 18, 1993. I've seen Time magazine's The New Face of America before. She is my sister or my cousin or that distant auntie, the auntie that calls indigena savages. America is computer-generated familial, morphing to create the kind of offspring that can eat the sun whole. Her eyes sing an egalitarian promise, but I know when she lies. The nation desires brown flesh only as long as it remains theoretical. Like a costume, it uses to scare itself in the mirror. Rejected, I used to obsess over Aztec deities as if they could quell my hunger for place. Mestizaje offered fortification from empire with empire, but when I spoke to my mother about Guadalique, she could not see herself in the earth. Pray to the Virgen de Guadalupe instead. If only my ancestors still talked to me, perhaps I would not be at the whim of reimagined nationhood. Two. DNA test tries to tell me that I am not who I imagined myself to be. Percentage points are allotted to scattered kin who may or may not know I exist. Continents pangea into one another like a collapsing star. The gods I was supposed to worship dance upon my cartography. The god I learned to worship becomes ink. Catholicism drips from my, my map like a stain. I trace voyages along oceans, chart the trails that allegedly led to my conception. I never take a DNA test. Three, my past holds too many secrets I will never hear. A story of silences subdued. Where do I come from? 
a breath, a breaking, a dream realized. I am a place reaching for its own foundation. Four, please forgive me for forgetting that which I never witnessed. Miss, I was never told. I know I've been a bad son, but remember I am but a pebble thrown into the river of time. I can build a dam, but not alone. I can remake myself, but not alone. I will not speak for you. I haven't the right to. You do not know who I am. Perhaps you know exactly where I've been. I welcome you into the caverns within me. Be sure not to get lost among the crystals. I want to anchor my dream of a decolonial somewhere to your being. How can I know something different without tracing something different? How do I build from a corroded base? Five. My three languages are colonized. Como serpientes me envuelven, a patchwork of scales and skin. Me asusta la fuerza de mi voz. My sharp words cause ruptures. And the pantna, pero esa palabra is not mine to claim, not mine. Quisiera tanto tener comunidad to know the original source. Mi cultura, pero nunca lo sabré. I search inside my own becoming. Busco mi pasado en lo que seré. Man, so glad you read that one. That last line. Oof. I look for my past and what I will become. Man, heck of a line. Um, the idea of me asusta. Almost like something outside. It scares me. It scares me. It's almost like a its own being, its own object. Um, and the, the way that you started off with that, thank you for sending me down the Wikipedia or the Google search for that 1993 cover. I found it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll definitely share it with the listeners. Um, but, but yeah, just the idea of like, this is what our world is going to look like. And you talked about earlier about a homogenization and, mm -hmm. and all the negativity that could come from that and, and often has come from that. Um, but yeah, there's just so much going on in that poem and I, I'll probably mess it up by talking more about it. So it stands on its own. Appreciate that. Thanks for letting us get inside the lab um that is your brain and thanks for letting us um thanks for talking about some really tough subjects i appreciate that and i know it came out in your poems and it wasn't anything new but i know it's not easy to to talk about um but again thanks for writing about grief and masculinity which are things that so many of us need to need to learn about read about find out about it and explore on our own i want to wish you great luck in the future um so awesome that foundation is coming out and again, just been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to to chat with you and for for your great questions as well. Like um, they definitely um, help spark a lot of a lot of thinking for me and as well. I appreciate that. Mad cheesy, but I'm gonna say it. The only thing I didn't like about the book was that it had to end. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's like I'm so I'm glad there's a I'm glad Foundation's coming out in the full length. So I'm looking forward to that and. Sounds like two, 2023 is so far away, but it's what two months away, three months away. Yeah, it's not <laughs> so, too far away. Yeah. Right. So maybe we'll have you on down the road when uh you know when when the another collection comes out or anything down the road. I'd love to to talk to you more. And anytime you're in Cali, let's maybe get together in NorCal. Yeah. Sounds great. Take care, man. All right, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye -bye.